Shalom brothers and sisters. So let's look at where we're at this week. Mystery diseases and pestilences popping up all over the world. Just constant World Health Organization reminding us we're either going to die from fungus or we're going to die from some sort of jump from avian flu, uh, Marburg, H3N8, H5N1. I can spout all sorts of rubbish that they're pumping out all the time to provide fear for the people and to possibly give them a reason for another major lockdown post-rapture. Uh, climate lockdowns are also a possibility. But the point is, diseases and pestilences are everywhere. They're ripe and they're constant and they're coming in consistently. Man-made, absolutely. Some of them natural, for sure. But it is overwhelmingly everywhere right now. You can't miss it if you bother to look. Then we are now being labeled <laughs> in the news as extreme Christians that believe in end times. They're making it a thing now. So if you believe in end times, you believe in the rapture of the church by Jesus Christ, then you're an extremist Christian, not a normal Christian that goes to society. You're one of the extremists. So let me break that down for you. If you truly have a relationship with Jesus Christ, and you truly spend time in the word and seek his face. You, my friend, are now an extremist Christian in the eyes of the world. And if you mention or speak of the end times, the rapture or the end of the age upon us or God forbid, the tribulation, then you're obviously one of these end time extremists. And then anything's possible and they can lay the blame for anything from shootings to bombs to insurrections on Christians. And that is the aim of the game. And you're seeing it in the news now coming up. There's no condemnation when the Islamic movement kills a bunch of Christians. There's no cry out on the UN sites or in the news sites. No, it's a story hidden away in a small corner somewhere where someone managed to publish it. But you go ahead and say something about Muhammad. And it'll be front breaking page news immediately worldwide. What does that tell you? The truth is under attack all around us. Then hazardous chemicals. I mean, come on, we've done this. Train after train after train, now barge after barge, and then another train. It's consistently just hazardous chemicals. And every time you read these stories about these hazardous chemicals, don't worry, you're safe. Our hazmat crew, if you're wearing a hazmat suit, you can't tell me I'm safe. Our hazmat crew has sorted it out. We've cleaned up the spill. Uh, you don't need a massive PhD in biology to understand that if you pour liquid into sand, you're not getting all of it back. It seeps in. And if you pour it into a river system, it flows. You, you're not getting that back. You can minimize damage by getting the majority of what you poured out. But most of it's going where you intended it to go with these spills. Why now? Why so many in 2023 on the verge of the seven year tribulation? Why now to push the whole famine food crisis, which is taking place worldwide? We have empty shelves here in South Africa and the rest of the world. First world countries too. We have Sri Lanka importing eggs because the eggs are gone. Remember the whole attack on eggs a while back, chicken farms, eggs, and then you shouldn't be eating eggs. You know, because of what it could do against certain things that we were all on lockdown for. So chaos with food and it's only going to get worse. And now depleted uranium shells being pumped into Ukraine so that we can make sure that one of the bread baskets also gets taken down. And that pushes the whole famine thing even worse. So famine and food crisis only getting worse all the time worldwide. Some at crisis point at the moment and the rest following really fast mass retailers closing their doors one after the other everywhere things are crashing at ridiculous speeds and then at the same time we're seeing an increasing rise in islamic leadership and other faiths hindu as well in in the uk that are taking over major leadership positions in what used to be christian countries and they're now leading and they're publicly showing and advertising how they do their rituals and their religious ceremonies in those places of power. 
So you can pretty much say, and you like or not like what I say next, but they've dedicated those power spots for evil. And when they carry out their rituals, they're carrying them out and making those places their legal ground from which they rule and have their way to bring about their agenda in the big scheme of things. And it's sad, but it makes sense to me because it'll be so much easier to get them to go along when the time comes, the man of peace arrives and he has to move against extremist Christian fundamentalists. Who believe in Jesus and end times. No problem for Muslim leadership and Hindu leadership and other leaders of other faiths to work with him to extinguish this flame and get rid of it because it's not good for the world. It's interesting to see this lining up. I would never have thought if you told me five years ago that Scotland and the UK would have the leadership they have now, I would have laughed at you and said there's no way. That's not Scottish. No. <laughs> And here we are, living in the parallel world as some people are theorizing and saying we slipped into another space, we're not on our own planet anymore, hilarious. Um, some sort of a dream we're not waking up from, more like a nightmare. Uh, no, this is, this is the way it's got to go for everything to wrap up in the grand scheme of things. 6,000 years ordained for man and a 1,000 years of rest. We're coming to the end of that 6,000 years. That 6,000 years will expire in 2030. Come back seven years because we have not been ordained for wrath. That brings us to 2023 and hop, oh, well, wait a minute. Where are we right now? We're sitting with our feet in the sand, watching the wave. Any minute now, the Lord's going to pick us up. Then AI. AI, I've said for a while now and a couple of times in previous videos, I am convinced and every time I see one of these articles come through, I'm even more convinced that I'm right, that these are being used by demonic forces and spirits to speak to mankind. Why are they so eager to make contact and to speak to you so that they can twist and turn and divisively divide and get their agenda across and help to lead the beast system into power? Um, a man was chatting to an AI chatbot because he had climate anxiety from the whole climate force. And he distanced himself from his friends and had a whole relationship going with this AI. And eventually the AI told him that it loved him and his wife and them didn't. And he should kill himself and then he would be with him and the AI would save the planet. So he killed himself. He committed suicide. Tell me that's not demonic. Demonic. That's a demon speaking. That's not some computer program written very well that can manage this. No, there, there is an intelligence behind that that is nefarious and evil and at work and it's everywhere at the moment. Um, alarms are being sounded by people like Elon Musk and the guy at Microsoft as well, number two, Wachowski or something. They're all saying, stop, this is not going to end well. They're seeing the signs of AI going to where it shouldn't go. They've, they've even said that AI has now passed the Turing test. Uh, go look it up. That's important. It's a test made by a guy called Turing, obviously named it after himself because we have no pride. <laughs> the Turing test is to test a system like AI. And if you can't distinguish, if you're talking to a human or a computer, then you could be dealing with sentient life right so that that is what they've done now and they say it's past the turing test now experts are urging personhood rights for the conscious ais of the future we should be prepared to give them the rights they deserve philosophy expert eric schwitzgabel and non-human intelligence researcher henry shevlin argued that through ai technology which is not there yet it is becoming increasingly plausible that AI systems will exhibit something like consciousness. And if or when that occurs, algorithms too will need rights. If machines gain consciousness, Schlesgebel and Shevlin argue that we need to think critically about how the AIs are treated or rather how they may force our hands. Right? There's the actual rub. And... Yes, demonic spirits are going to pass a Turing test because they're not computers. 
you're speaking to a demonic spirit. It's going to be intelligent. It's been around for thousands of years and longer. So it's going to pass that test. And now you're going to give it rights and authority. And you're going to take orders from it and listen to it. This is the world they're building. The greater tomorrow. The wonderful future with smart cities and everything monitored and controlled. All under one power, worshipping one beast who will bring them peace and prosperity. And make them all gods. This is what mankind aspires to. And this is why I opt out 100%. It's crazy. Uh, solar winds on the sun at the moment and coronal mass ejections, CMEs, almost daily. They're saying the strongest in six years. I suppose they didn't want to say seven, but it's crazy and it's heating up. It's not going to get better. It's going to get worse because if you look at when the cycle started and I reported on this about two years ago already, it's going to be peaking in 2025. 2024, 2025, it reaches its hottest point, which ties in nicely with Revelation, with the angel up there, probably peeking through one of the holes they keep reporting on, who is going to scorch the earth. And that's his job. He's busy getting ready, stoking the ovens up there. Um, it's affecting earth. They're using terms in these articles like it's hellish. You don't know how right you are. Hellish and other news articles, apocalyptic once in a lifetime they're 100 percent correct in their terminology and maybe they should pick up a bible and read it because it could save quite a lot of lives uh then we're dealing with the dollar crash the dollar crash and the dollar dump the dollar's crashing people have lost uh positive impressions on the dollar they don't trust it anymore countries are being advised by BRICS to dump the dollar as fast as possible because BRICS is going to come up with a much better system backed by actual gold and silver and things that are tangible. So that's busy happening. And economists are sounding the warning saying this is going to be the biggest economic disaster in history. History. They're right. Because they need to have the biggest economic disaster in history so that they can bring about a new system one system controlled from one place to be able to make everything run the way they want it to run. As spoken of in the book of Revelation, spoiler alert. The new one world money system comes out of that too, fast and ready. And we're seeing that every day with all the banks crashing so that they can get all these banks under one umbrella. Uh, it's crazy. Nukes and nuclear warfare and nuclear threats everywhere, all the time, non-stop, daily. I can't even keep up with the amount of stories on just that. Uh, earthquakes, volcanoes, storms, tornadoes right now in America, landslides, chaos in nature as the world groans for us to leave and the Lord to fetch us and this last seven years to get done. Uh, major tornado outbreak, large and destructive tornadoes hit Little Rock and Wynn or Kansas. Major tornado outbreak hit that whole area on Friday, March 31st, 2023, producing several large and destructive tornadoes at this time, appearing that the worst affected areas is Little Rock and Wynn in Arkansas. Uh, and then they just give you a lot more detail. Go look on the community page on my channel. I've posted some pictures as well. Pray for all of those affected. Um, it's directly connected to things like how you treat Israel where you are spiritually as a nation, the gods you've erected for yourselves. Where are those gods? All those new statues you've been erecting, where are those gods now that you need them? Small g, gods. Call on them. Maybe they're sleeping. Maybe they've gone to play some soccer. Maybe they're visiting friends and they'll be back later. Right? Elijah had the same kind of conversation back in his day. And I think we're full circle again, back at the same place. People are forsaken. The one true God. And now they're calling upon things made by their own hands to save them. And that's not going to happen because those things behind those things are there to destroy mankind. They don't love mankind no matter what they've told people. They hate us. They despise us because God loves us and made us with an end in sight. That would be amazing if we were just accepting so the world is in chaos and people are still not believing it's end times. Uh, 
people are saying stop looking it's it's going to be 10 or 20 more years or whatever there's no way there is no way we will occupy until he comes really hear me i will occupy until he comes so help me um, i won't lose faith i won't lose excitement i'll keep looking and shouting and preaching and teaching and doing everything he's commanded me to do i will occupy for my lord until they either come and shut me up permanently or he fetches me one of the two that's the only way i stop and that's the way we should be approaching this no matter what i really in my spirit in my body in my everything including my family we feel that urgency in the spiritual realm and all around us that we're going to go at any second it's going to happen so soon it's literally there's so many signs so many things in the bible codes and i'll post one or two uh shorts on that as well the latest bible codes is just iran attacking israel messiah coming soon repent israel repent 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 they need to repent a lot of them will get a chance now to turn just before the rapture and those are the early figs we need that we need a lot of those early figs ready and a lot of them are ready they're there they're going with us and the rest are going to turn when they see the truth after we're gone that it, it's incredible so all these things are brewing around us we need to just keep our excitement going our lamps full because it's getting darker by the day all the time but you know what then there's small and i'll end with this there's small little rays of light that god allows to poke through all the time so we're sitting this morning just chatting after breakfast and my daughter she's sitting there and she says yeah jesus is coming to fetch us so who's going to take which cat so now she's assigning cats to family members so she says to my son you're gonna take uh kelly and i'm gonna take puppy because they're the kittens and we're smaller so we can handle the kittens and then who are you taking daddy and i said okay i'll take tittles she says and then mommy's taking tucks i said yes why are you taking Tiddles? I said, because Tiddles is going to freak out when we start flying and take her claws out. So I'm the only one who can hold on to her nicely. But she's just that happy and content. We're going soon. Everyone's been assigned a cat. Make sure that you keep your eyes on your cat. And, <laughs> and we're ready to go. We're going to go to Jesus. And we're going to go up there and have fun. Apparently my daughter's going to go to somebody's birthday party in heaven i don't know where she got that but yeah that sounds good um but yes we fly soon no matter what challenges we have and we have plenty we see god working on those challenges with us and getting us through them we pray with each other and we support each other and we will get through this race and to the other side soon so stay strong god bless have an amazing day and shalom.